She's five years old, and she can't be restrained by the teacher. The teacher tries under various circumstances to calm this five-year-old girl, and she can't be, so they bring out a video camera to make sure everything's on the up and up. And they can't do anything. The teacher does what many people think is the right thing. They call the police. Well, police, because she just can't be restrained. They call the mother. First of all, mom says... Can't be there for an hour and a half. Now what do you do? They call the police. Police proceed to uh, put the little five-year-old girl's nose into the desk as they handcuff her, put her into the t- uh, car for an hour and a half. Until uh, mom gets there. Until huh? mom gets there. Yeah. And I am one of the few people I know, I, I guess I disagree with everybody, good for the police department. Mm-hmm. You know, out of control, five-year-olds have been the bane of the existence of the police for many years. Mm-hmm. You know, there was just a, a story recently, maybe last week, where a mom calls up nine one one and says, "My teenage daughter's out of control." Yeah, and the and the and the police officer says, "What do you want to do? Come over and kill her or right, shoot yeah. her? What do you want to do? Shoot her?" <laughs> Which is a pretty good, as smart alecky as that was. And the, yes, the the person needed to have taken it more seriously, and the other, the other end of nine one one. But what did the person want nine one one to do? Well, look, here's the same story though. A teacher calls up the police. Yeah. I've got a five year old out of control. If, what if, do I do? If you see the video, that the kid is. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you say striking? I mean, is is looking, seeking to try to hit this teacher now? Or as uh, Katie Couric would say, it looks like she was just trying to get a hug. Yeah, she didn't. She say did that. say that. She goes, it looks from to me like the little child was just trying to get a hug from the teacher. Katie Couric actually on the yes. Today show. Stop. <laughs> what kind of hug does Katie Couric used to getting? One from the rock and sock and robot. <laughs> I mean, I saw the video. I mean, she's going at her. <laughs> she did look. Now, okay, arguably, this five-year-old's not going to be able to do too much damage to this teacher. But still, in all, did she need to be handcuffed? I'm thinking, no, but I'm okay with it. If I find out my five-year-old has been handcuffed for an hour, I'm okay. It, 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 we get to Are the you end, serious? We get to the end of the day and say, hey, stop, stop mm-hmm. striking the teacher. Okay, so you, you, you got put in timeout with handcuffs on. I believe I'd have got more from Dad when I got home. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, the yeah, handcuffs would have been a treat to what Dad would have gave me. Now, what are you saying, ma'am? It's interesting you're on this topic. I'm a teacher in uh, Kirby Elementary School. It's here in Memphis. Yes. And we, we've had this to deal with. I teach the second grade. And it's inter- um, our students are very similar in age. So uh, eight or nine years yeah, old, Yeah, most of a seven or eight, really, is the, is the average age of a second grader. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, sometimes they do get out of hand. And sometimes we have this attention deficit disorder, and they take these pills. And yeah. it, it, trying to restrain a hyperactive child is such a hard, hard thing. And, of course, our hands are tied <laughs> so to speak, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Um, Our hands are tied because we can't just go, you know, first of all, we're unable, sad sad to say, to spank. Yeah. Um, So so what do you do? And I was, I commended this teacher for videotaping the entire thing because you just know that somebody would have said that there was something uh, untoward. Maybe she touched a child Mm -hmm. or something. And so she got it all documented on tape. But yeah, I, I'm in favor of restraining children. You have to restrain children. Yes. Well, it's too bad it's come to this, I think. Good for you. Thank you so much. Because in my day, a teacher, would, when I was a child, a teacher just haul off and slap a child. And that was, that was acceptable. And I mm-hmm. think schools were better in those days. I know that my second grade teacher would have put up with that. The day they took prayer out of the schools and the ability to spank children, look at our society today. It's absolutely I awful. I agree with you, ma'am. And I have one student. Her name is Tamika Gravis. And let me tell you about Tamika. One thing that Tamika and she cannot be restrained under any... When she gets in one of those ADD-induced moods, there's nothing you can do about it. Can you do... Did, please don't mention her name. Just don't just mention her name. She's oh, just I'm, a child. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah okay. But what we've done in our school is we have a little straight jacket. And it, it is... It, it fits. Uh, you have a straight jacket? What this is is a Cub Scout uniform with uh, arms that are... With arms that are too long. <laughs> yeah, you, you lose your train of thought there. Yes, excuse, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm drinking coffee. Yeah, I'm I understand. Just, I just, so and, you and have so, a straight well, jacket. Yes, yes. So, uh-huh. so what we do is, is is that we'll put the Cub Scout uniform on to make a grab right. and, and we'll tie the, the arms so she cannot move. Now, there are mm-hmm. people who, who are upset about this. Yes. Um, and she, I'll tell you, she is such a terrible, terrible child. Oh, please, well, ma'am. But what we have tried to do in, in the case of some of these students mm-hmm. is, is get the word across that, that you, yes, you have to obey your teacher. And mm-hmm. if you get violent, we'll get violent right back to yes, you. Now, obviously, we want not slap or hurt a child, mm-hmm. but we have used mace. Put them in the uh, mace. Use there, mace. Well, use mace on a child? The, well, no, I, the great, that seems a little excessive. It is. Next it thing is to be excessive. tasers. No, no, no. Come on. That would harm a child. But what I'm saying is that mace can be used from a 
Blackboard, from the Blackboard. If I'm teaching a lesson at the Blackboard, yeah. I can actually mace a child from across the room. 30 feet away. Well, I don't know the yeah, dimensions, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, well. But I am in favor of restraining children, and it has to happen. It uh, really does. Well, ma'am, I, 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 Boy, I'm sounds... sad to report that I, I do agree with you. Yeah. Well, well, I, well, it's about time. I don't know that I agree with well, the mace bit, Jay. Well, I mean, come some on. of these... The mace is a little hard, but so, well, I mean, the okay. straight jacket's a pretty clever sure, idea. Sure. And, and we call the parents, and sometimes if they can't be there for three, four hours, the yeah. child just stays there in a restrained fashion. So yeah. um, I just want to agree with this teacher. I don't know where it is, Connecticut or wherever. I'm not sure either. And uh, I, I just want to say, finally, you know, mm. the school system has a chance, a prayer, a breath mm. of hope mm. That it can improve. Ma'am, uh, okay. we well, appreciate your I call. I think you need morning. to improve your, your tactics somewhat, but nevertheless, so appreciate your call. Thank you. Bye bye. Love right. your show. Bye bye. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, where do you go with something uh, yeah. like that? I don't know. I don't either. I mean, that, it's, yeah. it's a, That's a, a tough, difficult. tough place to be for it a school is, teacher. It is, it is, definitely. This is Kix 106. Our phone number is 535-9106. It is Kix 106. I'm we see the story every time we turn on television is a five-year-old uh, student who's being unruly in class, and the teacher apparently has to call police because he just won't calm down. The, and you, this video, we all get to see it. The teacher is uh, being struck by the student. She's, mm-hmm. she's waving her arms and trying to strike the teacher, although Katie Couric says... That she thought the child was just looking for a hug from oh, the God. teacher. Yeah. Yeah. She obviously doesn't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, the t- the child was restrained by handcuffs mm-hmm. by police. Two police police came, officer. Police came in and put handcuffs on her and waited for the, the mom to arrive. Yeah. I've got no problem with that mm-hmm. at all. Uh, we got a teacher from Kirby Elementary School who called in yeah. and said that uh, she restrains her kids. In fact, there was one particular student, uh, Tamika Gravis, that is apparently in all sorts of trouble, had to be restrained with what she called a uh, a straight jacket made of an oversized Cub Scout uniform. Mm-hmm. She just tied the. Tied the arms yeah. behind her. And I think there was yeah. mace involved. And ma'am, you had a good point. She broke the law. There are laws to protect the identities of minors, not only in the criminal justice system, but also in the educational system. Well, you cannot reveal the name of a child or the school they go to mm-hmm. in the incident that she cited, even if it was a first name. If she's tied to that school, she just broke the law. Are you, you an officer? Are you an officer? Actually, I'm a criminal justice major. My mom has been a teacher for 30 years. So you know then. That yeah. that, so I know this. Uh, Kix 106, hello, you're on the air. Is, is there somebody on your radio station making fun of the things I said? I'd say not making funny. She's just stating some facts yes, about the law. Stating facts. No, I'm no. not making fun. I'm not making fun of it at all. But it's against the law to reveal the identity of the student you were talking about. It, it, ma'am, you can't do that. Ma'am, ma'am, am I talking to Perry Mason? Are, do you watch three Matlock episodes and you're a well, legal she's expert? A criminal justice major. She knows. Criminal justice major. Oh, well, that makes you an expert, ma'am. I'm a teacher and I know the law. And ma'am. You're gonna, I have three children, and I know the law. The law is public knowledge. Giving it's you, giving you three children. You know, anybody can breed, and anybody can bring a child into this world. And for you to call me and tell me I've broken the law is actually bogus. Let me tell you something. Tamika Gravis, by her own actions, stood there and violated a law with me. She has the legal obligation to be good, or she gets to be put in a straitjacket, and that is the law. And I, I didn't got say you. anything about the straitjacket. You just didn't say a word about it. But now, if you are this hostile towards me when I've done nothing to provoke it, how are you treating these kids? Uh, that can nothing to, it's interesting you say nothing to provoke it when you have come on the air and you've slandered me, and I'm going to hit Star 69, find out who you are, and you're going to hear from Corey B. Trotz. And sure, my name is Anna oh, Earl no, Arkansas. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. goodness. Okay, here it comes. A subpoena will be in your mailbox on Thursday, madam. That's, because, that's fine. If you want to go on air and, and tell these children's business, I am the least of your concern. Madam, first of all, the child is hyperactive. The child, Tamika has been nothing but a thorn in the side of all of the students for years. And for her to come on and just do her hyperactive BS when I have a class to teach, she deserves a, a kisser full of mace. Well, I'm not defending what the child has done. I Good don't for you. Good for you. It. Thank you so much. I, I'm not defending what the child has done. I'm, I'm glad we finally agree on, on something. Doing. What do you mean what I'm doing? Tamika Gravis, the whole Gravis family are nothing but they're, they're inbred, first of all. Yeah, and I happen to know that Herb, Herb and Lydia Gravis are actually first cousins. I, I, and that would explain a lot why Tamika behaves the way she does. Ma'am, Please I'm tell sorry, me you're not saying all this on the air and you're going to sue me for slander? Ma'am, I'm sorry. Madam, do you? Nobody owes me an apology. Do you know or do you not know the Gravis family? 
No, ma'am, I don't. Well, then you would know that Herb and Lydia are first cousins, and the first time no, that the first cousins marry, you're going to get a little Let her talk. Let her dig her own hole. Uh, okay. No, I, 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 you you make up so so angry. Apparently, you, you know you're an expert at, at the law and inbreeding. And I, I thank you very much for your call. We're going to hang you, up on I, this you are so I am so sorry this has gone this way. No, but. no, no. That's okay. I oh. think it needs to be revealed yeah. what kind of person you're is right. running that school. You're I'm right. glad she said everything she did. I hope it is aired. we got to go. Parents need to know. You, yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And I do want to we say this. Go. Just, go. Last we comment. were serious about gotten we to gotta go. go. Thank you so, thank ma'am. You, ma'am. Uh, thank Bye-bye. you. Ooh, that teacher makes me so oh, yeah. angry. Hey, me too. <gasps> A lot of nerve. Yeah. All right. It's Kicks 106. Kicks 106, hello. Good morning. I just wanted to call and say I love your show. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> you guys are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I live in Tipton County. I drive into Memphis every day. And let me tell you, you guys keep me laughing the whole way. Boy, that is so sweet. Were you aware that the Gravis family was inbred? I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I didn't either, but um, I'm a nurse, and that was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. Oh, that's so nice. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so much. For <laughs> You're welcome. Good morning. Bye bye. Kix 106, hello. Yes, I have a question, man. Yes. Yeah. All the voices that you've done, yeah. that you do. Did y'all do this in the other cities where you've worked at? Yes. Did you have anywhere near the success that you're having now here <laughs> no, in Memphis? No. Uh, in other cities, everybody gets it. For some reason, <laughs> we can't convince the good folks in Memphis that it's fake. <laughs> yes. And I, I just was wondering, to, I, don't, I, I can't get these people, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. All right. Hey, thank you. <laughs> From time to time, we do the fake teacher voice, which is me doing a female voice. That's you? It's me. It has been me the whole time. And once again, we usually take some topic in the news today. It was the five-year-old being handcuffed. And what we do is we take the teacher, me doing a voice, and we take some point of view that no reasonable, rational person would ever have. You and Captain argue with this person. We hang up. And the sparks fly. Hundreds of phone calls of people angry. And the biggest comment we get from time to time is, I can't believe you do this every day, yet people are still fooled by it. First of all, we don't do it every day. How often do we do the teacher? Maybe once a week. Maybe once a week. Um, Had a a teacher involved in a couple of arguments this morning. And that's the fun. That's when the fun begins. Because what you do is that person calls in to disagree with the teacher. You actually conference that person with the teacher. (laughs) So now here is me in a, in a female voice arguing with this person. And then I'll tell you what, it's some fun, fun. Turns out, and I didn't even know till this morning, the Gravis family inbred. And <laughs> I never knew that prior to today. Did you? I, I had my hunches. Now, what was your comment, ma'am? Man, missed- you guys got me good. Uh-oh. I was on the phone with that woman earlier. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was you, huh? I was on the phone with the woman earlier. The, the Yes, the school teacher. And it's a joke, apparently. Apparently it's a joke. Apparently. Well, thank you for helping me put the duh in uh, dumbass. Well, did you? She, uh, she was going to call Corey B. Trotz. I was going to get a hold of Ernie the attorney. We were going to have it out. <laughs> Without so, a battle. So I, I appreciate that you, you now know it's a joke and that you're not bitter and sore about it. Oh, my it. God. My husband is a construction worker. They are never going to let me live this down. I'm looking for tickets for something now. Yeah, so let me ask you this. Uh, you, so you... You talked to the lady, you got into a little bit of argument there, and yeah. it, it, you're, you're not bothered by the whole thing? Well, uh, I'm bothered by the serious issue, but the fact that it's a joke, yeah. hey, I love a practical, practical sure. joke, I've uh, done enough never, of them, I'm, I'm not upset. And the question that is burning on everybody's mind right now, have you never heard our show before? I usually don't hear it this early uh-huh. in the morning. You there, see? There's, that's it. We're getting, I guess I need to get a life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we're, no, we're just glad you tuned in. We hope you do it a lot more often. I tur- will, since you've got me, I will be listening to you every morning. And for everybody you've done this to, tell them not to get upset. Take a joke. You know it, what I mean? It, I, th- I think it's hilarious. As it turns out, we do this every day. <laughs> so. I know this now. <laughs> well, bless All you, right. man. You could have told you. me when I called. When, I, when you picked up the phone, you could have told me. But that's okay. And there would have been the comedy. <laughs> I Thank had a good you. time. Thank you. Oh, you